In this video, I'll be making a new version of my very popular table saw heads. There's nothing wrong with the old one, but the new one is smaller, a little bit easier to build, and it locks on the front and the back. This project is made almost completely from half inch plywood. And I'm gonna start by cutting out the parts for the fence rail. I wanna get that put together and put on the saw before I do anything else. And the fence rail is made of two assemblies. The first is the support rail that I'm putting together here. And I'm doing that on my very flat table saw to make sure everything stays straight. I'm driving in pins to keep the parts from sliding around while I drive in the screws. The one inch screws that I have are a little bit too long for two layers of plywood, so I'm just clipping the tip off. The other main assembly is the fence rail itself. That's two layers of half inch plywood glued together. And once again, I'm doing this on my table saw that's nice and flat. And in fact, I'm gonna clamp it down to my table saw and leave that to dry. And after it dried, I trimmed a very small amount off each edge to clean those up. Then I can get it sanded smooth and the corners rounded over slightly. And I want to get a couple of coats of water-based polyurethane on here before I mount it on the saw. And I made a very simple gauge block to make sure that it's the right distance from the top of the table saw. Obviously my table saw is homemade and made mostly from wood, so I won't have any problem mounting this rail on mine, but it wouldn't be very much more difficult on another saw. You just need to make sure it's straight and secure and mount it at the correct height. Next, I can get the fence rail put on, driving the screws from underneath. And the last thing to do is to put on the peel and stick measuring tape. Okay, now I can move on to building the fence itself. And the first thing to do is to measure how long it needs to be. This is a specific part here called the subtop in my plan. And that needs to equal the distance from the front of the fence rail to the back of the saw. Then I can cut the other parts based on that length. For example, the top is an inch and a half longer than the subtop. And the two parts of the fence base are a quarter inch shorter. Both of the parts for the fence base need a dado cut down the middle and that's to house the threaded rod that goes all the way through the fence. Now I can begin assembly starting with the T. These parts get glued together, some pins driven in to keep them from sliding around, and then I'll drive in three screws. I'll let the glue dry on that. Now I can scrape off the excess and make sure the top is nice and clean. The spacer block is glued on next, centered on that T. Then I can get the two parts for the fence base put together and clamped up. For the release of this project, I put together nine of my top woodworking plans for 70% off. For just the next week, click the link in the description to access this bundle, which includes the plans for this project, as well as plans for my woodworker's workbench, deck chair, patio table, large toolbox, miter saw station, drill press cabinet, woodworker's toolbox, and the strap clamp. If you're looking for some practical projects to build in your workshop, this is a great opportunity to get my most popular ones at a huge discount. While this offer is still available, simply click the link in the description to access this nine plan bundle for 70% off. And as always, thank you for your support. I let the glue dry for about an hour and now I'm going to fasten the fence base to the T and these parts need to be square to each other so the best way to do that is on the table saw itself. I'm taking these blocks and I'm wedging them into the miter slot. You need to locate the fence base an eighth of an inch from the back of the saw and also an eighth of an inch from the front of the fence rail and that's the reason why it's a quarter inch shorter. I'm going to get this clamped down on the back and the front and leave it to dry for at least an hour. And while it's drying, I can work on the cam handle 
And this is the most complex part of the build. I started by laying it out on a piece of half inch plywood. The other mark that I have here that I'm pointing to right now is for the bearings that go in the cam handles. I can use that one as a template to mark out the other one, but I also want both of these put together while I drill the hole for the bearings. So I'm using double-sided tape, and I'm also driving in a couple of pins for good measure. So here's that other mark again, the one for the bearings. It's very important to make sure that you're drilling on this point and not the center of the cam. The bearing should be a good fit, but you shouldn't have to drive them in. The cam handle needs to come apart, so I'm only gluing together half of it. The other part will get screwed on. These wooden tabs that I'm gluing on here are to hold the bearings in place. Now for a little bit of metal work, I need to drill the 5 16 inch hole through the pivot pin. This is just a regular cold roll steel, and mine has been sitting around for a few years, and it's gotten a little bit rusty. So I'm going to clean that up. And once again, this should just slip right into the bearings without having to force it. In the meantime, the glue dried on the fence tee, and I can get these screws driven in. But once again, they're a little bit too long, so I'm just going to clip the tip off. And if everything went well, this should be perfectly in line with the miter slot on the saw. Next, I need to cut out the clamping plates that go on the front and back. I recommend using quarter inch thick aluminum or steel for this, but you can also use metal that's an eighth of an inch thick and just double it up on the front. Once again, mine's been sitting around for a while, so it's a little bit rusty. Let's get that quickly cleaned up. Now I can start main assembly on the fence, and here I'm gluing the subtop to the top, and the top overhangs the subtop by three quarters of an inch on each end. Now I can fasten those plates in place, starting at the front where it's doubled up, and here I'm driving in the screw tight, and then I'm backing it off so that those plates are free to move. The one on the back, and I'm only using one layer here, can be screwed in tightly. These small scraps of half inch plywood that I'm gluing on here are spacers, and the upper part just sits on the lower part for now. And then the two parts will go fastened together with the faces that go on both sides of the fence. I'm filing down just the tips of the teeth on the threaded rod so I can get the pivot put on. Now I can get the cam handle installed and you can see why you need to be able to take it apart. I'm going to push the T up tight against the fence rail and wedge it in place again and stand the cam handle up and slide it fully forward. And there should be a little bit of play here when it's standing up, but when it goes down flat, those two plates should be touching the front of the fence rail. 
Now I can tighten the nuts on the back and this is where you'll be able to adjust the fence to make it lock. Next I can get the faces put on and press the pivot pin into the holes. And I should point out that these don't have to be pressed in. They can just slip in and work just fine. My holes are a little bit small, that's all. Now I'm going to put on a couple more clamps to hold the faces tight to that inner part and then I can drive in screws to secure those in place. And I'm not using any glue. After it's assembled, it's a good idea to check to make sure that it's square to the top of the table and make any adjustments as needed. Although wood is perfectly fine, I decided to make my pointer from a piece of angle iron. And with that, the project's finished. As I mentioned earlier in the video, you can get this plan as a part of a nine plan bundle for 70% off, but this is a limited time offer. So act fast.